27, day four, the fleet sets sail. Today we're going to practice making effort, uh, inferences as we read a piece of historical fiction about the Chinese Navy. Uh, a few words that you may or may not know, uh, some vocabulary. Uh, a junk is a type of boat. An armada is another type of boat. And a deckhand is a worker on a boat. Um, these Chinese fleets were in the four, early 1400s, and they were pretty amazing. If you want to go on Google and look up some images um, or some diagrams of Chinese ships, they are quite interesting. We're also focusing on organization. The writer has used historical facts to write a fiction story. So as you read, pay attention to the historical facts that you come across and notice how they've been tied into the, to the story. This is a really neat type of writing called uh, historical fiction often, where the author uses facts, but the story is not true. Um, so yeah. The fleet sets sail. It was twilight. Yuan was standing on the deck of a large Chinese junk, gazing at the huge fleet of ships around him. 300 ships in all, he had been told. Too many to see in the growing darkness. There were supply ships, battleships, horse transports, and many others. Most ships had nine masts and 12 sails. Many were more than 450 feet long. Since Yuan's junk was near the beginning of the fleet, he had seen Admiral Zheng He sail into the Yellow Sea. The year was 1403. Thousands of people had lined the Yangtze River to see the armada off that morning. Yuan was only a deckhand, yet he was part of an event unlike anything that had come before it. Yuan was not yet fully grown. What did he know of the fleet's goals? He knew that this was to be a trading mission. Beyond that, some say the emperor had directed Zheng He to forge alliances, collect exotic animals, and persuade rulers to pay tribute to China. Others believed the admiral's job was much more than that. They suspected that he had been told to explore civilizations at the ends of the earth, from the most western of the west to the most northern of the north, however far away they may be. As stars began to appear, Yuan took a bite of pickled fruit. He watched a man take out a strange instrument. The man seemed to be measuring the stars. Question 1. What can you infer about China in 1403? A. It was a primitive nation. B. It was an advanced culture. C. It was a strong but violent nation. D. It did not need goods from other countries. Question 2. How does Yuan feel, probably feel, about being part of the fleet? A. He finds it dull and uninspiring. B. He appears angry at being forced to go. C. He seems fascinated and proud. D. He is scared and uneasy about what may happen. Question 3. What inference can you make about the emperor? A. He wants China to be a world leader. B. He wants to conserve China's resources. C. He has little interest in the outside world. D. He has gained power through fighting wars. Question 4. What can you infer about Chinese knowledge of the stars in 1403? A. The Chinese had little interest in stars. B. The Chinese used stars to navigate the seas. C. The Chinese were the first to name the stars. Or D. The Chinese worshipped the stars. Strategy practice. Write two facts about ancient China you discovered while reading the passage. So now would be your time to pause, reread anything you need to read, fill in your multiple choice and your strategy answers. All right, for your answers. Number one, what can you infer about China in 1403? Definitely not a primitive nation. It has all these boats and awesome stuff going on. Seems like they had an advanced culture. Seems like maybe they were strong and violent because they had all these boats. Um, but we'll look at that answer. It did not need goods from other countries. I think it did because it was saying, hey, we're going to go and try to find exotic animals and persu persuade rulers to pay tribute, forge alliances. 
So I think that advanced culture is the best answer because they weren't necessarily violent. There's no evidence in the piece that says that they were violent. Question two, how does UN feel, probably feel, about being part of the fleet? I think he's excited about it. So this is dull and inspiring, no. Angry being forced to go, no. Fascinated and proud, I think so. Scared and uneasy about what may happen, no. Okay, this is another negative, negative, positive, negative, right? And uh, in that case, you're pretty confident that it's going to be the one positive, especially when that makes sense in the piece. Question three, what inference can you make about the emperor? He wants, to be a he wants China to be a world leader. Uh, that makes sense, right? He's going out and seeing the world. He wants to conserve China's resources. I don't think so, because he's sending like a bunch of people in boats and stuff out of the country. He has little interest in the outside world. Also not correct, because he's literally going to the west of the west and the north of the north. And he has gained power through fighting wars. That might be true, um, but there's no information really that here that would, that would say that. I mean, he says that there's lots of battleships, so that's a little bit of, of, uh, of information, clues. But I would say more that he wants China to be a world leader. Correct answer. And number four, what can you infer about Chinese knowledge of the stars in 1403? So at the end here, a man takes out a strange instrument and seems to be measuring the stars. So I use some background knowledge to know that that about what this instrument is, and maybe you had that background knowledge as well. Um, and they're actually using it to navigate. That's what the instrument is. And even if you didn't know what that instrument was, um, definitely wouldn't have little interest in stars considering there's somebody taking out an instrument to look at them. Them being the first to name the stars, there's no evidence of that in the piece. And that they're worshiping the stars, again, maybe, but the fact that the person on the boat is using an instrument, it leans us towards the correct answer being B. So, two facts about China that you discovered while reading. Uh, you could have answered that China had an armada in 1403. Could have answered that Chinese ships had nine masts and 12 sails. Uh, you could have answered that China had an emperor. That a, that, a, uh, that the Yangtze River is in China. So if you wrote two of those facts, then give yourself a mark. Okay, good work. Write that out out of five and continue your day. Oh, no, yeah, that's what I want to say. If you find this interesting, research it. Look up Chinese armada, Chinese fleet, junk boats. Find some diagrams. Redraw the diagrams. Rent out books from the e-library about the armada. Write your own historical fiction. So many ideas that come from this piece.